In this video, we lay the groundwork for our Windows 11 installation, using entirely free tools to create the safety net which will allow us to rapidly revert back to our current Windows 10 setup, preserving our existing apps and files. Hello everyone, and welcome to Tech Fix Flicks. Windows 11 is here, and we're keen to dive in but it's seemingly been released into shifting sands, as Microsoft's demanding hardware requirements and changes in policy regarding access to preview builds and future updates may lead to some nervousness amongst prospective early adopters, over and above the usual concerns about stability and compatibility with existing hardware and software. Can we therefore find a way to try Windows 11 in a risk-free environment, by effectively freezing our existing installation and rapidly reverting to it if necessary? In this video, we explore an entirely free solution, which enables us to create a full system image, including all existing files, folders, apps and settings. Once created, we greatly increase the freedom to experiment with Windows 11, safe in the knowledge we can roll back at any time. Historically, we haven't created full system backups of this type before, as we prefer to simply backup only our files and folders, before performing a clean installation of the latest version of Windows, using ISO files readily available from Microsoft. However, their messaging in relation to Windows 11 suggests that for this upgrade, it might well be a sensible precaution to have a full system image to hand, allowing us to revert to a fully functional and customised Windows 10 setup relatively quickly, including all currently installed apps and files. The outcome of this process will be twofold. Initially, we'll create an ISO image of a bootable rescue disk, which, once inserted into the machine, will boot into a rescue environment. Secondly, we'll make a full image of our existing Windows 10 drive, frozen in time at the point of its creation. Having secured these two files, we can install Windows 11 with full confidence that at any moment we can insert the rescue disk and use it to restore our full system image backup, returning the device to its exact status at the moment the image was created. In order to make the system image as compact as possible, we'd recommend emptying your recycle bin, uninstalling any unused programs and freeing up drive space by following the steps in the tutorial shown on screen now and linked in the written description accompanying this video. The free tool which we'll use to create both the rescue disk and the full system image is Macrium Reflect, an app which we've featured in a previous tutorial, and the process is incredibly straightforward. You'll find it at the link shown on screen now and in the written description. At the home page, we scroll down beyond the section titled Data Protection for Business until we reach Backup at Home, where we click Download Free, prompting the appearance of this pop-up. We select I need a personal free license and there's no requirement to register with an email address unless this is something which you specifically want to do. We click continue and the download begins. Once complete, we can click to close the pop-up. If you're an experienced user and confident that you don't need to follow the installation guide, you can jump ahead to the time code shown on screen now to skip to the main interface. Otherwise, we click to run reflectdlhf.exe noting that this is a download utility whose function is to download the full installer. We close our browser window to allow us to concentrate on the installer app. The free version of Macrium Reflect should be pre-selected, and we have the option to amend the download location, although this isn't particularly significant as the installer will run automatically if this box is ticked. We click Download. The downloading process begins, and a progress bar indicates the percentage completed. Once the download has concluded, user account control will appear on most systems to challenge the program's entitlement to run. If you'd like to suppress this message for future installations, you can follow the steps in the tutorial shown on screen now and linked in the written description. For now, we can simply click yes to confirm our consent. At the startup screen, we'd recommend unticking the box for log, which otherwise generates a log file for the installation, which is unlikely to be of interest in a successful installation. We then click Next to progress. The setup wizard appears, and we again click Next to advance. We click the radio button next to I accept the terms in the license agreement, and acceptance is mandatory in order to proceed. Clicking the button enables the option to progress by clicking Next. The license key should be pre-filled, and in most instances, we simply click the radio button next to Home for the Home edition, before again clicking Next to proceed. You can certainly register the software if that's your preference, but it isn't compulsory, and we untick the option, which greys out much of the panel, allowing us to again click Next. We're quite content with the options at the following screen, although we do click Browse, allowing us to install to a custom location of our choosing. With our custom path confirmed, we click Next, and we're ready to begin the installation by clicking Install. 
Again, a progress bar indicates the status of the installation. On completion, we see a shortcut icon placed on the desktop and, depending on when you perform the installation, there may be an immediate update available. With the Launch Now option automatically ticked, clicking Finish takes us to the main interface. In our installation, a further update was available, which can seem unusual given that we've just installed the software, but there is precedent for this in many other apps. In order to make sure we have the latest version, we click to download. Once more, the progression of the update is clearly indicated. On completion, we're advised that the application is ready to patch and we click start. Patching begins and once concluded, we click finish to return to the main interface. It's now time to create the bootable rescue media by clicking on the disk icon in the upper left. As a reminder, this isn't your backup, but creates a rescue environment from which your backup can be restored. And this environment can be accessed whether your machine is running Windows 10, Windows 11, or even if it's failing to boot entirely. In this instance, we want to create an ISO file, which will subsequently either burn to disk or more realistically write to a small USB stick. From the machines we've tested, the average size of this ISO is between 500 and 650 megabytes. Given the differences between ISOs produced by different machines, we'd advocate creating a unique rescue disk for each machine you back up. To help us locate the ISO file after it's been created, we change the save location by clicking Browse, then navigating to a convenient location where we rename the ISO to differentiate it from any similar files we've created for other machines, before clicking Save. With our destination location set, we are ready to proceed by clicking Build. We receive a steady flow of updates as the WIM is built, mounted, committed and unmounted before the ISO is finalised. At the conclusion of the process, we are notified that the rescue media has been successfully created. To use it, we'll need to either write it to a USB drive or burn it to a physical disk, and we cover the fundamentals of this process in the tutorial shown on screen now. We click OK before closing the Builder dialog. We've now completed the first half of the task. All that remains is to back up our Windows system drive, and Macrium Reflect makes this very easy by offering a specific option to perform precisely this function. We therefore click Create an image of the partitions required to back up and restore Windows. Don't forget that your image is effectively frozen in time at the point of its creation. Any subsequent changes to your system will not be included in this backup, and you should consider repeating the backup should you make any further significant updates to your existing Windows installation. The drive or drives we need to image are automatically selected for us. You may need to make separate provision for any additional disks which aren't included in this selection. Now we simply need to select an appropriate drive to store our backup image. We therefore click the icon with the three dots in order to navigate to our backup drive. The backup will require a large drive, and the size shown beside Total Selected will offer an indication as to the amount of storage required. The best option is either a removable external drive, or as is the case with us, a network drive. In most usage cases, it isn't advisable to back up to the same drive as the source, as any damage to the source drive would then also potentially corrupt the backup. With our destination location confirmed, we click Next. Macrium Reflect offers a wealth of scheduling options, which are worth exploring in their own right. However, to keep matters simple for now, we simply click Next, advancing to the image summary where we click Finish. We're again offered functionality which we don't intend to use on this occasion, so we deselect the option to save as an XML file, before clicking OK. With that, our backup job commences. This will be by far the most time consuming part of the process, and you'll be able to take a significant break from the computer, allowing it to process in the background. A clear indication of the time remaining is provided, and this will vary significantly between machines, based upon the speed of source and destination drives, speed of transfer, and volume of data being processed. Be prepared for a significant wait in some instances. Upon successful completion, we receive notification which can be cleared by clicking OK. We can also click to close the main backup dialog, returning us to the main interface, which we can also close. Let's now review what we've accomplished in the tutorial. Within our Downloads folder is an ISO file of the rescue disk, now ready to be burnt to a physical disk or USB drive, in this instance weighing in at 491 megabytes. Meanwhile on our network drive, we find a full system image of our Windows drive, at just under 20 gigabytes. Almost all regular installations will be significantly larger. Now let's skip forward to a time where we need to restore our backup. We've imaged our rescue media to a USB drive, which we've inserted into our PC, directing our BIOS to boot from it. 
We see the familiar Windows logo giving way to the Macrium Reflect dialog, which loads the necessary resources to create the rescue environment, in which we find a number of tools which can be used to recover the system. Crucial for this project is the ability to browse for an image or backup file to restore. Clicking that option opens a dialog through which we can navigate to our stored system image, before clicking to restore it. Upon completion of the restoration process, our PC will return to its exact status at the point at which the backup was created, restoring the operating system together with any apps and files. This will replace any Windows 11 installations stored on the main drive, and we can now proceed as though we'd never updated. Join us in our next video when we download and install Windows 11 before taking a first look at its user interface. Check out our back catalogue of more than 100 tech tutorials and be sure to subscribe to follow our future projects by clicking the logo shown on screen now. If you'd like to keep watching, there are links on screen to more videos you might find useful. If you can improve our methods, if you need assistance, or if you just want to discuss anything you've seen, get in touch via the comments. We love to hear from you. Thank you very much for watching and we'll see you soon for your next tech fix.